Hi, my name is Onita Castillo and I'm the original designs team leader here at Rogers Gardens. Today we're going to be talking about summer container gardening and I have three different types of arrangements to show you today. First, we're going to be talking about the arrangements that we made for the Hummingbird Summer here at Rogers Gardens. They are primarily for full sun. Uh, most of the plants that you see in full sun garden containers have lots of colorful blooms, and this is great for a Hummingbird Summer here at Rogers. Um, lots of these have bright reds and purples and pinks because hummingbirds are drawn to those colors. You'll also notice something about the hummingbird attractive uh, hummingbird attracting plants is that they have long tubular flowers. So a lot of these have uh, long tubular flowers where hummingbirds can stick their long beaks into them and that's how they get the nectar. We also have this great nectar feeder on a stake inside the garden and that'll bring even more hummingbirds to your garden. So most of the time in arrangements uh, we like to stick with a thriller which is the tall kind of uh, tall centerpiece for your arrangement. Uh, the filler plants that kind of bridge down to the spillers, which kind of um, hang over the front of the pot. So we have lots of different um, types of flowers in here. Salvia, the hummingbirds really love salvia. Pentis, uh, the kufia, we got some petunias and vincas. Not everything has to be tubular for the hummingbirds to be attracted to it. I've seen plenty of hummingbirds come around these vincas and the petunias. So even though we have a lot of different um, plants in here, um, all of them will do great inside this pot. You want to pick plants that will uh, that like similar growing conditions. So a lot of these like the full hot summer uh, sun exposure, and they'll do great with lots of uh, lots of water and regular fertilizing. So I also want to talk about care because during the summer months we get a lot of pests, mainly a lot of worms. So when you have a pollinator garden, it is good to kind of uh, think about what pollinators you're trying to attract. Hummingbirds are fine um, with some sort of organic pesticides, but a lot of the caterpillars uh, that you're trying to attract, like the monarch butterflies, you don't want to use an insecticide with those. So since these are pollinator gardens for hummingbirds, it's okay to use something like the BT spray to get rid of those worms. A lot of petunias, um, get a lot of budworms and that causes the the flowers not to open and not to produce at all. So you really want to have this in your arsenal for summer gardening. Another thing that I want to talk about for uh, sun container gardening is it's really good to keep up with the deadheading. And even though when you're out in the garden you don't necessarily have these on you all the time, it's better to really use these because then you're not pulling on the stem and really putting extra stress on those roots. These are uh, needle nose pruning shears. Um, they're easier to use when you have lots of flowers and you need to get into a small space. So if you have like those big shears, sometimes it's, it's hard and, and they don't cut really well. These are really great and really sharp to use, um, best to use inside, um, inside tight spaces. So now I'm gonna show you how to uh, deadhead flowers and remove um, any spent blooms. And this really encourages more blooms to grow. Okay, so when you're looking at the flowers, you notice that this is a little dead right here. This is a little droopy. It looks like this might have gotten broken. So I'm just going to snip this off as close as I can to the next set of leaves so that I encourage more growth right there. And if you look in here, you notice that there are some new buds growing. So I wanna snip off only the old. And I'm going to get rid of a lot of these spent ones, but make sure that I keep the new buds that are coming out. Also, especially with petunias close to the coast, we get a lot of mold and mildew from the old blossoms, and that can be from overhead watering or the really unusual misty mornings that we have in June. So you really want to clean those up because they can just hinder new growth. But you want to make sure that this is a new bloom and you want to leave that. Now that we've talked about full sun exposure container gardening, we'll move on to shady exposure container gardening. These are some of the shade container gardens that I chose to show you today. 
Now I also have something different where I'm showing you some specimen type pieces and also a mixture. It's great to kind of um, pair those two together. You don't have to have everything over chock full with all kinds of different plants. You can have just center um, great plantings for something that you really want to highlight. Something that we want to highlight this year and that we plant every year from tubers is our tuberous begonias. Most of these are upright begonias, um, whereas in here, this one kind of, uh, this is the hanging basket variety. Um, I also have this white variety, and we also have a yellow fragrant uh, begonia. These are so somewhat new. We had them last year, um, but they're really, they're really great with a sweet little light smell in the morning, and they have just beautiful flowers. These are just coming out of dormancy. Later into the summer, they're really going to be full with blooms everywhere. Just like the petunias, these also need to be deadheaded once they get a little bit spent. They'll turn a little bit brown, a little bit mushy, and you just want to remove those. So just like this one, we're going to remove some of these smaller spent flowers just to kind of clean it up and make sure that everything keeps blooming. And just like the, the other sunflowers, you also want to continually um, fertilize these regularly so that you pr produce more blooms. For this large arrangement, you also want to keep up with deadheading. Some of these begonias will also start to turn brown and you'll want to you'll wanna pull off some of those. The impatiens will also need regular pinching to produce more fuller growth. Uh, the Rex begonia doesn't need much cleaning. Um, and then you might want to trim up some of these. These are baby tears inside here. And then the regular impatiens and some of the great coleus. Coleus might get some worms, so that might um, be another spot where you use your caterpillar spray. So that is our shade container gardening and now we'll move on to succulent container gardening. Now we're going to be talking about something that's great also for summer in those really hot months are succulent containers. Um, these are great if you constantly go on vacation and you don't want to have to worry about watering something more than once a week. Uh, these containers are great for that. They're great for kind of sitting and forgetting out on a patio and they really bring some great color to, to your patio. It's really great to mix and match containers in your succulent arrangements. It really makes one or the other pop a little bit more. So pairing galvanized metal and ceramic black containers is a great idea. Um, and also having different textures and colors of succulents really makes something pop. Sometimes you can have all muted tones, but adding that little chartreuse green really adds a pop to your arrangements. And I like how this one is, is 360, but on one side you have different um, succulents and the other side is different. So every angle that you look at is a unique part of the arrangement. Same with succulent containers, you also want to do a little bit of maintenance on them. Some of the dead leaves around the bottoms of the succulents will also need to be taken out. Um, you'll just pull that dead material away just to keep these little succulent arrangements nice and tidy because it's something that you, you tend to look down on and look really closely at. So they need fairly little maintenance, but just a little bit of cleaning every once in a while. Fertilizer is not really necessary, um, but water sometimes is at least once or twice a week during the really, really once we get to like 90 and 100 degree weather. All of these are great ideas for your summer container patio garden. Some of them are for shade, some of them are for sun, some of them are for if you just want to take a long vacation and forget about it. All of these are available on our online shop. I hope you liked this video. If you do, please hit like at the bottom, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more gardening tips. Thank you.